Hello and welcome to the University of Sussex, live from Brighton. Well, Hove, actually. Hello and welcome to the University of Sussex Lockdown Special live from my living room. Hope you're well, hope you're keeping safe in today's current weirdness. Uh, so today we decided to do this live show to you for two reasons actually. Firstly, because picking a university, picking a degree, picking basically your future is pretty stressful under normal conditions, let alone when we have to do it in lockdown. So we're going to help, help, hopefully help you make a little bit more uh, of an informed decision. Don't have to come to Sussex by any means. I like Sussex, so I, I hope you all do. Uh, but I hope today we can give you a little bit of a taste of what it would be like if you actually came to an open day here. Um, the second reason why we're doing this is because, well, we've just spent the last few months developing a new piece of software. We spun it out into a new company and the piece of software is a whole cloud-based infrastructure for doing shows like this. So we thought, why not try it out? We convinced the marketing department to let us do it. We didn't tell the marketing department it was still in beta. We also didn't tell the marketing department that last night we were still trying to make it work at about midnight. But, you know, if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, then, you know, move fast and break things. It is the tech industry after all. Anyway, what we'll do is introduce you to a couple of people. First up is uh, Ian. He's down the line somewhere in uh, Brighton. Hello, Ian. Hi there, Phil. Nice there to see you. Hello. Where are you at the moment? So, then? I'm over in Brighton, actually. Not oh. hard. <laughs> the less salubrious part of town. Um, now, if you want to ask any <laughs> questions on today's thing, because it is because it is live, um, there is uh, a number that you can, uh, um, not ring obviously, um, uh, there's a number that you can uh, uh, text, an iMessage at the bottom, and uh, also WhatsApp I believe, please don't ring, because you know, the phone's on silent, I don't have to pick it up in the middle of the show and talk to people, but if you do text a question, we might uh, be able to answer it, certainly there'll be enough time for us to Google the answer if we don't know. But now, I'm going to hand you over to Ian. Ian. Okay, thanks very much, Phil. So, my name is Ian Wakeman. I'm a professor of systems here at the University of Sussex. And it's my pleasure to sort of talk to you a little bit about what you actually can expect if you come to the school here at Sussex. Um, here is Brighton, scanned down into an aerial view of the campus of Sussex. And if you look on the right hand side, that is where the residences are. That is where where you'll be able to get, stay and actually look and sort of um, live in the sort of campus residences down there. In the middle, there are the academic buildings. And on the far left hand side, there's Brighton and Hove Albion's uh, Amex, community, Amex Community Stadium. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in very shortly. Okay, so what's the, it's one of the great things about coming to Sussex is you'll be joining us. The University of Sussex had a great time. Um, we've got around 19,000 students from uh, over 125 countries. Um, and we're, over the course of the 50-odd 50 year, 50 years that Sussex has been uh, in existence, we've had the work done for three Nobel Prizes and one Crawford Prize. And the Crawford Prize is the equivalent of the Nobel Prize for sort of biological sciences. And we're very proud of the quality of the work that actually gets done at Sussex. Um, you can look at many league tables in com comparing universities. The one we particularly like at the moment is the Times Higher Education World Rankings, where we're 146th in the world and 19th in the UK. And now, one of the best things about coming to Sussex is we're also it's one of the sunniest campuses in the UK. There's a few question marks there because the competition and marketing authorities don't necessarily want us to actually sort of uh, be wrong. OK, so who will be teaching you? Um, well, you're coming here to join us in a school which has both engineering in and product design, but also we call ourselves an informatics 
faculty because we don't just study computer science and artificial intelligence. We look at how we process information, whether it be in the sort of the brains and our consciousness through to how insects work in sort of uh, navigating through the world so we can actually build the next generation of navigation systems for drones. Now, one of the great things about doing computer science is when you come out, you're going to be in high demand for jobs. And one of the nice things about having a low supply and a high demand is that your salaries are pretty good when you actually get a job. OK, so what do we look like? Well, our staff are a lovely bunch. I mean, we're very approachable. We're nice people. Uh, here we are in our graduation. Here we are in our graduation uh, finery, sort of having just come out of the Brighton Centre on the seafront. And we're just going down the road to mingle with the students, have a drink after the graduation and celebrate. We have experts across a variety of sort of um, um, domains from artificial intelligence to sort of thermofluids. To, we have sort of things like the Center for Consciousness and the Interact Lab for sort of um, some of the really great technologies coming out for next generation interaction. We also have a number of faculty who have spun out and taken their research into sort of the real world and produce companies such as, are we going to spin out company? There we go. Uh, there we get me sort of um, a number of different companies. Well, I mean, obviously the guys are taking out their software here out of the real world, but I'll point a little bit at InCrowd. So InCrowd was a company I set up uh, eight years ago now. And what we did is we, when you go to a football match and have 30,000 people around you, your phone doesn't really get a signal very often. So what we did, my research team and I, we went out and we built software that goes on the phone so that when you go to the football match, it starts building a network between all the phones in the crowd. And whilst you may not get a signal out on the 3G, 5G now, someone can and they'll suck down the updates to the app and scores going on elsewhere. And that was so successful, we spent, we now sort of work with in sports, ranging from sort of football to cricket to athletics to Formula One. And we have 50 odd people actually sort of out in Brighton. Uh, one of the great things about sort of having so many people with contacts in industry is we work hard to actually help you in an industrial placement year, an optional thing you can do to actually improve your chances of getting a job. Uh, in, typically, in between the second and the third year, you take some time out to actually sort of go and work with a company, ranging from funds such as IBM, such as sort of Jaguar, down to smaller sort of uh, medium-sized enterprises. Okay, our graduates, what do they do? Well, here are two of our recent graduates. So we have Simon Seegers. You would have got seen phones have, co um, have field phones have processes in. So uh, most of those are now built by ARM and Simon, a graduate of ours from sort of back in the 90s, uh, is now the chief executive officer. We also have our recent graduates, people like Lucy here. Lucy graduated from project design over the summer and as part of her final year project, she designed and built a new material built out of fish scales, which is now running and won uh, her Dyson sort of project, a uh, Dyson prize of 30,000 pounds. OK, we'd love to see you in September and then we'll help you over the years so that you graduate with Sanjeev in three years time. OK, thanks very much. I'll hand you back to Phil now. Phil. Thank you very much. Uh, we just had a couple of questions uh, come in. So if you could stick around in, we'll okay. answer a couple of those. Um, the first question is uh, actually how many. Well, actually, no, I'm going to roll back a question because it was, are we doing the computer science one or was it engineering? That's my fault. I forgot the introduction and did the wrong one. So this is actually the computer science. So you probably picked that up by now because that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> the second question was how many societies uh, can we join at one time? And the number of that is actually unlimited. It's basically down to how much you, you feel you can fit in. We don't put an artificial uh, limit on. Now, I'm going to bring Ian in for this one because uh, uh, can I just borrow? that device because I uh, we have multiple devices um, working today so uh, can you um, how, how is uh, COVID-19 going to impact the first year so Ian I think should have a bit of an idea of this because we have been working very hard to work out how this is going to happen okay so what we have do now at the moment in this term we're doing remote teaching where sort of uh, what we're doing is using technologies such as Zoom, such as Discord, um, to actually get in contact with our students to answer their questions and to run virtual lectures, question and answer sessions and work through sort of the labs. So at the moment, for instance, I'm teaching introductory programming in the first year. So I'm working with the students and sort of um, helping them with their labs, helping them uh, with their programs, basically sharing screens, looking at their editors, telling them 
helping them sort of do stuff. Um, this isn't perfect. I'd rather be in the lab helping you, but sort of it does work. So come September, what we're expecting at the moment is for people to be able to come to university, but obviously the rest will still be in social distancing mode. So we may be switching some of our larger lectures, so our lectures themselves may start to be sort of uh, distance driven, but then we'll have in-person labs where we have sort of social distancing between the seats in the labs, or seminars which are again so, so we're expecting to be able to teach in person, but not necessarily in big crowded lecture theatres. Those may be replaced by sort of uh, by remote dis uh, remote delivery. And Ian, do you, that do you think that the, the accommodation is going to be open? Of course, people will be able to come and uh, live on campus, etc. Yep. At the moment, we're expecting the accommodation to be open. We're expecting people to be able to come and be on campus. Uh, Again, this again we're dependent, but following the science, following the epidemiology, uh, we're expecting hopefully the government to actually sort of have got the containment phase back in again, where we actually sort of keep and control with the, and detect the number of sort of corona sort of um, sufferers and make sure they're looked after and isolated so it doesn't spread across the rest of the population. Okay, that's great. One more question, um, and I'm not sure that we know this at the moment, is which resident is best student rated with the University of Sussex on campus? Would it be East Slope or Northfield? Well, East Slope is brand that's new. An if anyone's heard the rumours that East Slope is 40 years old, that's because we just knocked it down and built a new one. Um, so I would think, yes. I don't know, actually. They're both pretty new. I think, for, yeah, I think they're both new. I think they're both nice places to live. Uh, we'll see in the video coming up just a look what it looks like up in uh, East Slope as well. Yes, and in fact, that is, that is uh, actually what we've got coming up. Obviously, we'd like you to come and uh, walk around campus and have a look, but we can't really do that. So we're going to show you a little clip of uh, what it could be like if you were here. Right, so that's a little bit of an overview of the university. Now let's um, talk about what we can actually study here at Sussex. And if you can see here, we have uh, six degrees. Now, actually, there's only five degrees. The sixth degree there is the foundation year, and that is just an additional year on the top. But we have six degrees, and I'm going to rattle through these quite quickly, but if you want to know more information, look at uh, online, that'll give you the very, very low level details. The trouble is the low level details change quite often. So I really want to just give you a high level picture because we want to keep the, the low level details change as technology changes. Now, all our degrees are BSc or MCom, which means that they're either the bachelor, which is the honours degree, or the master's degree, uh, which is an additional year. They're all BCS accredited. Now, some people get confused with the fact that it's a BSc and BCS. BCS is the, well, used to be called the British Computer Society, but they read branded to BCS just to confuse us and what that means is that anything uh, any institution that has a BCS accredited degree means their degrees are at the same level so if you look at us or anyone else with that you, you know that the teaching is at a specific quality uh, and that will get you um, the right level of degree. One of the things that I personally believe quite passionately about is that you don't know what you're going to do yet. In fact, you quite often don't know what you're going to do until you've done it. So we have the ability to allow you to switch around your degree in the first year. You can make a decision now to do, say, games and multimedia environment, but you might think, well, I don't want to do that anymore. I want to do computer science and artificial intelligence or something like that. I should have picked one, picked one to, to say that. But anyway, uh, let's have a look at what you can expect when you study here at Sussex. Well, first of all, we want you to create software. We don't want you to just use it. We want you to write the new stuff. You might even be writing a new software language. I don't mind as long as you're making stuff. And that's the exciting thing. Using computers is great, but being able to make stuff like the system we've made today, you know, we can do that just by using stuff. We've actually got to go and write software and make that happen. We we are a friendly and approachable bunch of faculty. What does that mean? Does it mean if I see you outside, I'll say hello? Yeah, probably. Does it mean if you're down the pub, I'll buy you a pint? Well, no, because the pubs are shut, aren't they? So that'd be silly. 
Um, and you, you are enth enthusiastic and motivated, and you probably are, because we get a load of questions here, so a load of people are watching it, so you have to be motivated to have bothered to wake up this early on Saturday morning. It is Saturday, isn't it? Yeah, let's pretend it is. So let's have a look at how our year works. We actually have two terms in the year. We have an autumn term and we have a spring term. Uh, we don't have the winter term because let's face it, it's cold and horrible. Um, so autumn finishes at Christmas, spring starts then just slightly afterwards. We have two assessment periods, one at the end of each term. So you don't have to wait till July to be assessed on something in September that you learnt in September. And quite a lot of the assessments will be coursework anyway. I personally don't like exams for the stuff I teach. I generally set coursework, I think, is a better learning experience. Um, if we duplicate this uh, three times, we then get one um, uh, course length, which is a BSc, and then we add the extra year for the MSc. And then in the middle there, you uh, slot the uh, placement options. If you want to go off and do a placement like Ian was talking about, you can do that between years two and three. And that's a really good idea, to um, a time for you to determine whether you're still on the right course or whether you might need to chop and change a little bit. Right, let's talk about the kinds of things we do here. Now, as I said, I'm not gonna go over the low level details. You can find those uh, online, but they do change a lot because we're trying to keep up with, with current trends and current technologies. But this is the overview of the areas that we're teaching. So programming, we have to teach programming. We're a computer science department. It'd be stupid for us not to. But we teach programming. We also do computing foundations, algorithms, etc. We also do software engineering, which is like programming, but a bit more sort of team space. We do computer systems. We also do um, web computing and then we have uh, things like management which fit into the management degree and then we do stuff like intelligence systems and robotics and adaptive systems which fit more into the AI side of things. We have music and audio and graphics and uh, animation and then finally we have professional issues because we're not just skilling you up to be skilled at being able to do a job, we also want you to be able to keep that job, get that job in the first place and understand how to work in the workplace. Right, so First up, we're going to talk about what happens if we combine these uh, areas in, together to form a degree. And the first degree I want to talk about is computer science. But computer science is not just a degree, it's also a discipline. And you'll see here in this uh, vid, we've got Jake here who's making, uh, or who, who made for a project, a motion capture suit that allowed you to play online games across the internet. And this is a very interesting project because not only um, did he have to package up the data and send it across the internet, he also had to work out how he's going to compress it and how to use this kind of data, which, you know, it's not video, you can't do this. It's a real computer science project. Uh, but although all the gear we used, that just came from a local company that, that produces mocap stuff for films. Uh, so computer science is the foundation of anything and all of our, well, anything, I say anything, anything in the computing world, is all of our degrees. So all of our degrees sit on top of a computing foundation, which means you are able to switch around. Um, but the main computer science uh, degree is a BSc, and you can do that straight as computer science, and you'll get BSc honours in this. Afterwards, if you want to do an additional year, you can do the MCOMP as well. Some people suggest that if you just want to do the MCOMP, apply for the MCOMP, and then you can roll back if you don't want to do it later. It doesn't really matter. It's totally up to you. Now, let's have a look at uh, the next degree, which is, again, the Computer Science Foundation, but this time with Computing for Business and Management on top of it. It's basically the same, but we have a business management section taught by the business school. Now, these are guys who are on campus, you know, they're not very far away, just a few hundred metres up the hill, and they talk and work about business with the same sort of passion and enthusiasm that we do with computing. So that's pretty good. Now, here is a little vid um, of a bit of fintech being developed. And you can see here that there's all sorts of combinations of sort of phones and QR codes and weird stuff going on. Because what the, the, uh, this particular bank actually was trying to do was develop a piece of technology that could take disparate technologies and uh, enable one sort of cohesive shopping experience. Um, but actually this is also a development process. So this is uh, done using a concept of design fiction, where we make a film about what might be made to uh, sort of inform non-technical people of what could be made and therefore they can fund it uh, and that kind of stuff. So let's have a look at the next degree now, which is um, computer science and artificial intelligence. And we have a long uh, pedigree here at Sussex with CS and AI, and we've been doing it for a long time. And if you want to come to uh, a real expert place, then come to Sussex. But what is 
what is artificial intelligence and what is the point? I mean, we don't sit here really and make computers that you want to have a conversation with. It's not sort of the sci-fi stuff. Um, this is much more real world. What can you do with artificial intelligence? For example, you could want to read every tweet that's ever happened and get a feeling for the state of the world. Well, you can do that with AI. You couldn't do that with a normal human because there, there, there's just too much to process. Even if you had a room full of humans, you couldn't aggregate all that data together fast enough to understand it. But you can with uh, an AI system which can glean a bit of sentiment from what you're doing. So it's those kind of things that we work out with computer systems and artificial intelligence. Now, our next subject is digital media, and this is actually split into two degrees. It's quite a big area of computing, so we've had to uh, split it into two. But basically, it's the same as normal. We get the digital media layer there on top of the computer science foundation. So let's have a look at the first degree in this, which is the games and multimedia environments degree. And if you say it quick enough, it spells the word game. Yeah, look at that. Clever. Anyway, uh, we do lots of things in this. For example, programming. It's a program thing. It's, it's, it's not just about playing games. Uh, sorry. Uh, you can play games if you like, but it's about building them. So we do programming. We do um, 3D. There's web stuff. There's video. And it's all about how you can actually develop 3D environments that are interactive. It might not be a game. You might find another use for it. I've got a little video here showing you at, uh, uh, about some of the stuff that some of the people will make. And typically, the projects you're looking at here have been made by one person over a period of about... 10-ish weeks, maybe 11 weeks, something like that. And what this means is that it doesn't look like a AAA game because there hasn't been 300 people, including artists and marketing people, working on it. It is just one person and what they can develop in one basically 10-week period. But I think it shows the kinds of things that you can uh, explore and get on with. Let's have a look at our final degree now, which is computing for digital media. And again, you can see in computer from digital media, we have a whole load of stuff. For example, programming, I think the graphics have got a bit stuck there. Oh, they're coming. We've got programming and, and um, web delivery and all that kind of stuff, still professional issues and things like that. But we also concentrate on things like video and specifically live. Live is actually very difficult. We know we're doing it now. This is live, obviously. Um, the problem, though, with things like live is, is how do you make it work in a world that you just want to be completely software? It's actually very difficult. Oh, conveniently, we might have solved some of the problems. Um, but there's also the non-live side of things. For example, visual effects. And this is the kind of thing you can do if you want to get into the film industry, which is a, a, a very uh, viable path for computer science. Uh, this is an example of a VFX project here where uh, Nick here has used uh, a shot on campus and used um, computer generated and computer composited uh, versions of stuff to make it look like a totally different place. Now, after your degree, or during the degree, at the end of the degree, sorry, at the end, that's where it is, you do your individual project. And your individual project is another time that you get to um, really tune your degree into something that you want to do. And you can take all of the components that you've uh, learned in your degree, plus new ones if you want, to uh, produce a final year project, which you can then take as a portfolio piece to your first employer. And this is a really useful thing. It gives you the idea to understand the things you like or possibly you don't like, and that you can then go and start your career with. So um, that's uh, about it uh, from the degree point of view. Um, we did have uh, another question um, coming up, which was, in fact, actually, have you got the question over there? I can't remember what it was now. Um, We'll come back to the question in a moment. We, it, we, uh, I've managed to lock the screen. And then my small dog has started to eat a small bit of cardboard all over the place. So, you know, what's what can you do? What's the most typical industry that computing for digital media graduates are working in? Okay, so what the question was, what is the most typical industry that computing for digital media graduates have been working in? And I think we'll bring Ian back for this, just mainly because we can. So, um, Ian, did you hear that? Okay, I did. <laughs> I'm back in the picture again. Um, so Phil, yes, yeah, so sort of um, digital, they typically, uh, nowadays when you make big films, when you make any sort of video production, there's typically a lot of sort of graphics work and sort of producing effects. And sort of many of the people from digital media graduate and go and work in companies. Things like sort of, um, uh, sort of, so typically we've got people from graduates from the CDM, 
working in the big effects companies, working on films such as uh, it's gone out of my head, Phil. I'll pass it back to you because you know these people. Oh, I can't remember. He sent me a link on his Facebook page of all the stuff he's worked. There, there's loads of stuff that people work on, actually. And um, a lot of the industry is based in the UK as well as uh, distributed around the world. So although you might be working for Hollywood, it doesn't actually have to be there. So there's lots of um, sort of film post production you can work in. But also there's TV and um, engineering management of TV. In fact, even a lot of people go into production as well because there's a, a, a lot of creative. There's, uh, there's also a lot of work in visual effects which isn't um, stuff which is wielding a mouse. There's a lot of stuff which is development. For example, you know, you want to use a computer for doing a particular shot. Quite a lot of that actually involves um, development of software or maybe writing scripts in Python to manage a significant amount of data moving around to do a specific production. Um, there was another question which was um, about study abroad areas. What kind of study abroad areas are there for computer science? Now, did you have time to Google it, Ian? <laughs> <laughs> I did indeed. So um, I'm in Google, this is a wonderful thing, um, the full list is actually rather long. So if, um, if I look down there and sort of just come up slightly as a camera, we've got a big bunch of uh, universities across the world, ranging from the US, Thailand, South Korea, uh, Hong Kong, Germany to Australia. So um, it is all there. These are good quality universities, places like Hong Kong University of Technology. So, and, so go have a look on the phone. Uh, if there's a particular question, we'll take it offline and come back and ask you about how it all works. Okay. Thanks, cool. Ian. More questions. Now, we're just going to wrap up. Oh, hold on. We've got one more question. Um, what? Uh, cool. Are game students also able to produce their final project in two, a 2D environment rather than a 3D? So the final question was, are, are game students able to produce their final year project in a 2D environment rather than a 3D environment? Actually, yes, they are. In fact, I had a project student last year who not only produced the game in a 2D environment, also developed a whole 2D game engine that runs on Android and now set up a company to, uh, well, actually, I think he gives away the SDK, but I think he then sets up the support system around that. So he's, he developed the game in the 2D engine, found the 2D engine was such a good thing that he'd made, and went out and, and did that. So, yeah, there is a lot of flexibility okay. around um, what you do for your projects. And actually, you should pick you know, a, a tutor that works in that particular area, and they can help you and guide you through that stuff. Anyway, thanks, Ian. You've been great. Um, okay, we'll probably catch you later on. Maybe, oh, I was going to say go for a beer, but obviously the pubs are shut, so we'll, we'll do it over Zoom. Um, now, what I thought we'd do for the last few moments, just while we've got a couple of minutes, in fact, how much have we got left? Oh, just enough time before we go and do the next one. Um, we're going to show you a little bit about how this works, because normally what happens is we take you on a trip around our undergraduate labs, uh, but we can't do that. So let's show you virtually how we're running today's thing. And actually, Patrick and I here, uh, there's Patrick, give us a wave. We've been, uh, we spun out a company called Mavis, and we produce, um, oh, the dog's eating something. Uh, we produce a piece of software that allows you to do cloud-based production. We've stacked all the gear that you get in an OB truck, the kind of things that you see sitting outside football games. We virtualize the whole thing, and we now run it completely on a cloud-based software infrastructure. Patrick's got the uh, control system for it. There we happen to be running this one on an iPad, and he can cut around in, can you cut to pro? You probably do, so there we go. He can just sort of tap it in. And this, all what you see going on there is um, very, very low latency. We've had to develop an entire low latency network protocol to get it to work because, of course, he pushes a button. That cut gets cut on a server system, I think in Ireland or wherever we spun it up today, and then the picture comes back. So everything you're seeing here today, all the pictures are going off to that server, uh, being cut, being made, being produced by Patrick sitting in another location somewhere in Brighton. Nobody knows where Patrick is, he won't tell us. And then the whole thing comes back together and then you get to see it. Anyway, that, oh, bye Patrick. Anyway, that is all we've got time to today. Thank you very much for your questions. I think I got through them all. It's a bit difficult because now the dogs run off with the phone. Well, it was, I mean, it's not even made of chicken. Anyway, uh, if you've got any more questions, feel free to keep texting uh, and asking th uh, throughout the day or just drop us a line at the email address as well. But thank you very much for listening, everybody. Hope to see you soon. Bye-bye for now.